Hello everybody, it's Visual Nova again. I got a little story for you. I almost shit myself. Alright, so, I sit down, I start the game, I'm like, hmm, I just had my coffee, right? So I'm like, eh, I, I'm good, I'm good for one more recording. I sit down, I drink a little bit more, I, st <laughs> I start recording, and then my ass was just like, you motherfucker, you better go right now or you're gonna shit yourself on the stool on which you sit. I had to I had to run to the bathroom. It was it was turtling. It was turtling. It was it was ready. It was ready to go. But <laughs> I'm okay now. <laughs> and with that story, that seems like a good way to start a new episode of Planetarian. So we we left off. Uh Junker and Reverie are on a little date. She's walking him like a sweetheart to his car, and he's being the usual prick that he always is. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> you could call me a garbage collector. Fuck. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I was on the wrong screen. A garbage collector? That is, that is a very important job. She replied with a sweet smile on her face. She thinks you're disgusting now. And, and poor. Um, I'm, I'm, where am I? I was willing to bet that her response would have been the same if she had asked a god of death the same question. Yeah. Yeah, she would've, because she's, she's a little sweetheart. My enclosure was designed from the very beginning for ease of recycling, so... Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Don't say that, Reverie. We are going now, alright? Wait, no. We are going now, alright? Before she could start showing off her abilities, I stood up and threw up my... Oh, she can recycle. Why would they need a robot that can recycle things? Uh, I stood up and threw my knapsack around my shoulder. Hi. Yes, Hi. let us go. And then I said to her as she, st as she started to pick up the bouquet without having... I hate you. I already know what you're going to say. Leave it right there. Oh my god, I hate this guy so much. Are you speaking of this bouquet? Yes, you are just liable to fall the more you carry it around, right? Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yes, but this is yours, Mr. Customer, so... Oh, my God. Look, I also happen to be the one telling you to throw it away. You motherfucker. I know I'm always complaining about how mean he is, but he's just a straight-up asshole. But... Fine, the bouquet is mine, so give it to me. If... If you, if you do anything but hold it to your chest tightly and, and adore it, if you do anything besides that, I swear to God. Here's your bouquet. She presented the somewhat lighter bouquet to me with a huge smile on her face. M my bouquet, huh? I stared deliberately at the thing that I was about to throw away onto the road. You son of a bitch. Right, this just proved that I was unlikely to get used to her aesthetic sense. Finally, I secured the bouquet with one of my knapsack straps. Yay! Okay. Alright. Alright. Alright, Mr. Junker. Even if I threw such a light thing away at this point, it was not as my burden would decrease any. <laughs> Fuck you. Thank you very much. She's thanking you for accepting your gift. Fuck you, dude. Whether she, uh, she knew of my internal struggle or not, she suddenly thanked me. Yes, well, I am... <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I am a garbage collector. I answered. Well then, let us be off. If if she was a real person, she would have she would have given away your position to the mer mich mission jaggers and fucked you over. At least I would have. And then I would steal your car. Then I would steal your car and leave. She then proceeded to snuggle up next to me. Aww, as if it were a matter of course. And you let her, okay. You, this guy's all over the place. I hate him. I hate him so much. We had been walking for roughly two hours. An old shopping district spread out before us. Unlike the district of the high-rises that we came from, there, were a, there was a cluster of low buildings, two stories at the most, uh, crowding left and right around the roadways. Whoa. You can't, you can't even see anything. And in their midst, one shop in pitiful shape revealed itself from the midst of the rain. It seemed that this was once a liquor shop. Oh yeah, time to get drunk and forget all my problems. Half of half of an old wooden signpost was engraved with the simple legend, liquor store. 
The warped and bent iron plates of what once had been the door shutters, along with chunks of plaster building material, were strewn on the nearby streets, and glass fragments were scattered about. <coughs> Sorry. From the destruction, it looked as if the storefront had been torn apart by the blast of a grenade at point-blank range. Guys, I don't know how sad this is going to be at the end, but Katawa Shoujo made me cry like a little bitch. I don't know what's going to happen with this game. It was impossible to tell whether this was intentional handiwork of another junker or collateral damage from a battle. The, spec the spectacle of that fresh- oh shit, it's fresh. Of that fresh destruction in the midst of this dead ruin, in the midst of this dead ruin, for which time had it otherwise stopped, was a dis dissonant- was as dissonant as a comb that had last all lost all its teeth. Fuck, I cannot read right now. <laughs> Mr. Customer, may I ask a question? She suddenly cut in. Was this due to an automobile accident or a gas explosion or something like that? Uh, no, there was a fucking grenade here. It killed like five people. Yeah, they're right there. You can see them. And their limbs. They some Somebody piled their limbs over there, too. Hmm. Looks like we're eating tonight, Reverie. We're eating good tonight. Uh, one could say something like that. If that is the case, then we must call for emergency services right away. She, sat, she at once said about testing her radio communications that she was so proud of. But it was not as if she would receive a response. After 10 seconds, she spoke. I have queried the support center regarding news about the accident, but uh, I have not received a response. I believe it might be due to an electrical outage. The electrical outage. A simple robot like me cannot deal with the situation. I am very worried. It was already taken care of long, a long time ago. Look, I will prove it to you. There is nobody around, is there now? She anxiously hung her head. Just how many times had I seen that particular action out of her? Damn, man. This is too heavy for her. For her little robot heart. Yes, I understand. What a flashy way to go about breaking things, though. I armed my flechette gun again. Wait here. <laughs> He's gotta have that drink. Gotta have that whiskey. <clears throat> yes, order acknowledged. As she saw me off with a very out-of-place smile, I carefully approached the door. She's all happy and cheery, he walks in, sets off a trip mine, and then she's splattered with his blood. Um, Mr. Customer, are you feeling ill? <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> I surveyed the, t the tableau, tableau that greeted me. My voice, my voice went for some reason. It's all hoarse now. <clears throat> Animorphs, bitches. I'm going to transform into a horse. Fragments of colored of glass colored light brown and light green were dispersed all over the narrow interior of the shop. Those covers of those books were always creepy as fuck. Like the middle transition part? Ugh, ugh, so gross. Had I been present at the moment of impact, I could pro I could have probably have gotten dead drunk off the stench alone. Oh, everything's destroyed. Damn. Sucks for you, Junker. I bet you'd probably rather deal with Reverie while drunk off your ass. <clears throat> But time and the rain had now caused everything to sober up. Certainly, if I, had, if I searched carefully, I might be able to find a surviving bottle or two. That's all I can think about. Booze. Freaking alcoholic over here. But the current state of affairs would allow me no such luxury. If only the destruction were at least partial. Only partial. Full of regret, I returned to the entrance and looked at the place that had once been a, a liquor store being beaten down by the rain. Shop, store, what's the difference? Time to go. Just when I appeared out of the shop, I noticed something green that had here hither, hitherto been concealed, shining on the side of the footpath. What the fuck is hitherto? I drew near to it, stepping on the fragmented concrete. Just as I had thought, this bottle, this was a bottle of what was probably high-grade liquor. You lucky bitch. The cardboard display case had long since rotted away, but the bottle itself seemed unbroken. Time to party! Hell yeah! The moment I stretched out my hand to grab it, the <laughs> I just imagined Reverie drinking with Junker and then just twerking. The both of them twerking in the middle of the street. <laughs> the last moment of a pitiful old man flashed through my mind. A booby trap, huh? Oh shit, I didn't even think of that. While the potential for it being such a trap was low, it was still much better to be safe than sorry. Is he gonna tell Reverie? He's gonna tell Reverie to get it, isn't he? I surveyed my surroundings. I could not see any wires or trip plates anywhere. The other possibility was... 
that at that moment, a hand stretched out from beside me and grabbed the liquor bottle. Oh shit. No! <laughs> what if that would have blown you up? Here you go. Oh, uh, but I did not even have the inclination to become angry with her anymore. Because I got myself some alcohol, some booze. And so I merely received the bottle in silence. You better say thank you, bitch. It was a simple cylindrical bottle, holding what was unmistakably distilled liquor. Hey, Reverie, you wanna, you wanna take a couple shots? Yeah, let's get crazy. I immediately broke its seal and opened the plastic cap. Damn, straight to it, huh? This had been the first time that I had approached the seal of one of my prizes in the location that I had found it in. But I did not care at this point. I just gotta have that liquor. Oh, I gotta drink it. Oh, I need it. I need it. As I drew the bottle to my mouth in order to partake of it, an inquisite, exquisite aroma that time had not decayed one bit filled my nose. This was unmistakably a fine blended whiskey. This one prize for all my troubles. The smile spilled out of me involuntarily. Well, at least you're smiling, prick. While my situation was, st was still as bad as it ever was, I still felt good. I wonder why. I wonder why so many people drink alcohol. I don't think it's just to feel good. I mean, that's stupid, right? Right? As if some weight had been lifted off my shoulders. <laughs> Mr. Customer, <laughs> is there water in that bottle? Nope, it's 99% cane alcohol. I'm gonna destroy my liver. My liver. <laughs> she asked just as I was about to taste the liquor. Why do you ask that? No, I'm not an alcoholic. Don't, don't look at me like that. You had said before that a doctor had told you that you should never drink water that you did not draw yourself, correct? You have a good memory. I wonder, I wonder why. Thank you very much. As I am a robot, remembering a thing, remembering things is one of my strong points. Remembering thing. Then remember one thing. <laughs> this is my medicine. As I passed the bottle before my before her eyes, she very conscientiously read the label. These words, I'm telling you. No, no, motherfucker, I believe that is not medicine, you lying son of a bitch, but a kind of scotch whiskey. Cuddy Sark barrel aids for 12 years, costing tax included. What the hell? You are well informed, how wonderful. Ah, thank you very much. I took the opportunity that the goddess of henpecking's words of gratitude presented and took a swig of the bottle's contents. Aw, oh, shit. Let's party. And I quickly choked. <laughs> Mr. Customer, are you okay? The scotch, the first I had imbibed in months, was so strong that my body vomited it back up. I hope it went out your nose and burned your fucking nostrils for being such an asshole. I took another sip, this time in order to savor the flavor. Savor the flavor. The air that had that rushed into me from the bottle was saturated with alcohol, and I could feel the warmth of the liquor in my stomach. Not bad. Just imagine the Obama's face. Not bad. Yes, it is very high quality, so it should slide down your throat. Oh God, why do you say it like that, Reverie? It it should slide down your throat as smoothly as silk. Have you ever partaken of it? She would probably die. Or break down. <laughs> Short circuit or something. Whatever robots do when they get wet. Oh god, not, not that way. No, no, as I am a robot, I cannot eat or drink. That is too bad, because this shit is tight. In order to do my tea... Whoa, what? In order to do my teetotaler robot companion honor, I took another swig. I'm learning so many new words. <laughs> You're here learning along with me. The more you know... Now if I could only have some cigarettes, this world would be heaven itself. And a pretty lady. You just need the cigarettes. She simply gazed at the destroyed shop, a smile floating to her face. Oh. She, she's like, yes, death happened here. Her shoulder, entirely covered by the waterproof cloak, I looked somewhat unsteady to me. I, it's always planetarian that I cannot read the sentences correctly. Consistently. Her shoulder, entirely covered by the waterproof cloak, looked somewhat unsteady to me. The rubble, washed by the unbroken sheets of rain, glimmered as a dull silver color. When is- how long is this? I sealed the whiskey bottle to its original airtight state, and then I secured it into a pocket of my knapsack. 
I don't know how much longer this game is. I tried looking it up and I couldn't see anything. We took a course northwest from here. Because I had chosen to walk through all the alleyways, it was difficult to tell, well, well, tell where we were. However, I could tell that we were making progress towards the quarantine wall. The air was rife with the stench of rainwater. I could sense no ill will from the continuous falling of the rain, except that it would kill you if it got into your eyes or something. The sarcophagus city, having lost its protective dome, was like an open-faced water tank. Perhaps the entirety of the east side, city side was thus slightly submerged in water I cannot read. I'm so sorry. If that were the case, then the likelihood of having to fight off a patrol of heavy combat units in this area was low. He just runs across a group of like other junkers, and then they just have an orgy. Straight up orgy. It appeared that unless there were patrols that hugged the quarantine wall, we had evaded the warmongers for now. Perhaps because they had grown much colder since the time that we left, she appeared to be in good condition as well. well at least you're, you're, you're thoughtful of her. Kinda. What do you think about the planetarium? She walked slightly ahead of me, repeating her usual phrase to herself. Oh man. <laughs> I, I, I wonder how many times I've said that through this whole playthrough. That beautiful twinkling of eternity that will never fade, no matter when. This town was now hers. Although the roads were immersed in water, she did not seem to mind at all. With a gait that verged on a dance, she walked along these sidewalks that were devoid of people. The traffic lights bereft of light and the road signs bereft of faces were simply and quietly bidding her farewell. This robot shaped like a young woman, mm, and the hush of buildings, none of which had any duty any longer, and the hundreds of millions of raindrops. It was a scene that made the depths of my heart ache, much like a vague reverie that would vanish by dawn. Okay, I don't... This guy is the most bipolar person I've ever seen. Uh, Mr. Customer, the elevation starts to change a little here. She came to a stop at a rift in the sidewalk and turned in a circle, surveying her surroundings. And then she fell into a puddle of water with a grand splash. <laughs> oh, reverie. This was already the 14th time. Get your shit together, Reverie. God. Well, if my memory served, that was... I told you not to look around, did I not? You had it coming. Yes, I have no excuse. All these falls do not seem to have damaged you. Well, I'm sturdy as fuck. I am constructed more sturdily than I appear. I did not know whether this was the truth or a joke, but she beamed radiantly all the same. Water dripped briskly from the cloak that I had lent her. She probably really didn't did like the rain after all. Well, shouldn't you help her out of the water? I mean, <laughs> she's still in it. Perhaps it was due to the alcohol that I had just imbibed, but I found myself thinking that way. Before long, her gait slackened. What? Do you need a break? No, I can walk a little further. Trooper, she's a little trooper. I like Reverie. Obviously. I see. Wow, it really is raining. You don't, uh, oh, you know, I want to be mean to you, Reverie, but I can't. I was going to make a smart-ass comment about n how obvious it is, but I'll let it slide. So it is. The same casual exchange of words that I knew not how many times we had repeated. The bouquet hanging from my knapsack clinked like some kind of protective ta talisman along with, her f with my footsteps. It appears that the roads of this vicinity are different from what is recorded in my databases. Did he say talisman? Jackie! If you don't know what I'm talking about, you had a very, very sad childhood. If you don't know, if you don't remember the talismans and Jackie and yeah, best show ever. She spoke those words like a stale joke every single time we came across barricades and barbed wire entanglement. Has this area been renovated recently? Probably something like that. I like what they did with the red paint. They just splattered it everywhere. Uh, there, there really are few people out and about today. Yes, just the two of us. It's a little day. Perfect for Valentine's Day. It is true that rainy days like this tend to be quite boring. I'm never bored when I'm with you, Reverie. However, I believe that it can be fun to simply allow such rainy days to pass, peace pass by peacefully at home. 
But then in that case, the number of customers coming to the planetarium would decrease, and I would be quite troubled. <laughs> she gets whipped by Mr. Manager when there's not enough customers? Oh god. She continued to talk as we continued to wander about. Hey. Hey. Yes, what is it? Do you not get bored? That's a good question, actually. Are you saying that you are bored, sir? You have worked at the planetarium for the entirety of your operational lifespan, correct? But have you not ever thought about trying a completely different line of work? This was an abrupt question even coming from me. You should be drunk all the time. Maybe you'll be jolly and nice to her. Why did she, she who adhered so strictly to her professional duties, decide to abandon her post today and follow me instead? It may have been that the answers to those two questions were not so dissimilar. Without a total change of software, I am not flexible enough to be able to do any other kind of work. And I believe that all kinds of work are equally precious. I thought you would say as much. However, I am very pleased with my current line of work. It is very enjoyable and fulfilling for me to work with Mr. Manager and everybody on staff and Miss Gina. It is true that as of late we have not had too many customers, but I firmly believe that someday many customers will come to our planetarium once again. Alright guys, that's the end of this episode. We'll find out more about what the fuck is going on. Is it gonna finish? Uh, I wanna change the scenery. I'm pretty sure you guys do too, but I don't know. Anyway, thanks for joining me. If you liked, if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. I'll see you on the next one, everybody. Bye-bye.